Hello guys. In this session, we will talk about KNN. So let's begin this session. Okay, so before starting KNN, what is the classification algorithm? Classification algorithm is a supervised learning technique uh, that is used to identify the category of new observation on the basis of training data. Right? Classification algorithm we can use to classify the given input data into some predefined categories. So here you can see the example, if we have any spam message, if we have an uh, email message, so that email message we can pass into a classifier, right? And then we will get the output either as inbox or spam folder. So there are two classes or two labels, you can say inbox and spam folder. So this is a classification problem, okay? So in the last session, we have discussed about logistic regression. And uh, in this session, we'll talk about KNN, K nearest neighbor. So it is one of the simplest machine learning algorithm based on supervised learning technique. It assumes that similar data points are near to each other. This algorithm performs classification on the basis of nearest data points. It is a model that classifies a data point based on the points that are most close to it. K algorithm finds the K points, or we can say K neighbors that are closer to this sample point or the test point returns the most frequently used label of the classes as the predicted label. So K and basically perform classification on the basis of nearest data point. So this algorithm by default use number of neighbors five as default. So n neighbors is the hyperparameter here, and the default value is five. We can also change this value, right? It depends on the data set. So what is K in KNN algorithm? So K is the number of nearest neighbors and the default value is five in KNN algorithm. In this image, you can see, uh, let's say we have two classes here, class A and class B. So uh, these red samples belongs to class A, these green samples belongs to class B. But if we get any new data point here, suppose this is a new data point and we want to classify this new data point either the class A or class B. So if we use a KNN and if we pass K equal to three, it means we have to find three nearest neighbor of this new data point. So nearest neighbor we can find on the basis of some distance formula. So either we can use a Euclidean distance formula or we can use a Minkowski distance formula. Okay, so there are some other distance formulas that we can use here. So on the basis of some distance formula, we can find the nearest neighbors of a given data point. So let's assume that uh, we have got these three data points on the basis of distance formula. And out of these three data points, two data points, uh, these two green, two data points belong to uh, class B and this one red data point belongs to class A. Right. And thereafter, we can find the majority of the class. So here we can see the class B has high majority because uh, here we have two samples out of three right? and one sample from class A. So on the basis of uh, high majority voting, we can say this new sample, this new sample belongs to class B right? because class B has highest because class B has high majority voting here, right? But if we pass K equal to seven, it means we have to find seven nearest neighbor. And if we do so, then you can see we have four nearest neighbor from class A and we have three nearest neighbor from class B. So here we can see the class A now has high majority voting, right? Class A has high majority voting. Now the sample, belongs to class A. So KNN perform classification on the basis of nearest neighbor and majority voting. So what are the steps in KNN? Suppose we have uh, this data, we have two category, uh, we have category A, category B, and we have this new data point. So we want to classify this new data point either as a category A or category B. So what are the major steps here? So the first step is, so uh, we have to choose the value of K. Right? We have to choose the value of 
k and the default value is 5. So let's take here default value k equal to 5. So in the first tab, we have to select the value of k. Next step is we have to calculate the distance of new data point to all the other training data points. If we talk about this data set and here we have a new data point. So we have to find the distance between this new data point and every other data point that we have in train set here. And the distance we can find either using Euclidean or Manhattan or any other distance formula we can use that support uh, KNN. So you can see the distance between two data point here. And this is a formula here, x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square and the square root. Right, so this is how we can find the distance between two data points. Next step is so uh, take the k nearest neighbors as per the calculated equivalent distance. Now on the basis of distance that we have calculated in the step two, uh, in the step three, we'll uh, pick the k nearest neighbor. Right? We'll pick the k nearest neighbor. So here you can see on the basis of distance, we have got these five nearest neighbor. Right? We have got these five nearest neighbor uh, that are very close to this new data point. Right? So here we have got uh, three nearest neighbor from category A and two nearest neighbor from category B. This is our step. This is step three. Next step four, uh, among these K neighbors count the number of data points in each category. So here you can see uh, three nearest neighbor from category A and two nearest neighbor from category B. In the step five, we can assign new data point to the category that has maximum neighbors here. Okay? We can assign new data point to the category that has maximum neighbor. So we can say that uh, this new data point will belong to category A. Okay? This new data point belongs to category A because category A has high majority voting here. And so these are the steps that we uh, that we can implement while can. So in the step one, we can choose the value of k. In the step two, we can calculate the distance between new data point on the test point and every other training sample. In the step three, we can uh, pick the k nearest neighbor on the basis of distance that we have calculated in the step two. In the step four, we can among the k neighbors, we can count the number of data points in each category. In the step five, we can assign new data points to the category that has maximum neighbors. Okay, so these are the steps. Okay, uh, before implementing KNN using AWS SageMaker, first uh, I'll show you how to implement KNN using Scikit-Learn, and then we will go ahead to the SageMaker. So again, here we will use IS dataset. Okay, or let's use here Digit dataset from sklearn dot data sets import instead of iris data set let's use here load digit so load digit is a classification data set which consists hand written digit images and number of classes 10 here okay i'll also uh, display the sample image or sample data so import matplotlib matplotlib dot by plot as plt then uh, it's a d equal to load digits next uh, x equal to d dot data and y equal to d dot target if you want to see the target names we can write d dot target names you can see here we have got 10 classes from 0 till 9. Number of samples we have x dot shape 1797 and 64. We have 64 features and 1797 number of rows or number of observations. Okay, let's uh, display a sample that we have at index 0. So at index 0, we have this sample. Uh, let's, uh, okay, uh, test equal to x0 so each image or each sample here we can display if we have image as 8 by 8 right so we have to reshape this image if you want to see the detailed documentation about this data set you can just write t dot 
D dot description. Run this. Okay, let's use your print statement. You can see number of senses, number of attributes, and uh, eight by eight is the image size here, and no missing value. Right, so that's why here we have to reshape image into eight by eight. Reshape image into eight by eight. Next, we can use plt dot image show, and we can pass a test. And uh, all the images we have as a grayscale, right? So we can use here three map, three map equal to gray, and plt dot show. We can see this image. I think then uh, here the number is zero. If you want to see the actual label corresponding to this input data so we can write uh, y at index zero you can see and the corresponding class is zero here right so we have data in this format okay now we want to use here knn but before knn we have to split the data into train and test so from sklearn dot neighbors import knn okay neighbor classifier and uh, from sklearn dot model selection import train test split and we will also import here uh, evaluation metric so in the case of uh, classification uh, evaluation metric that we can use is accuracy score so from sklearn dot matrix matrices import accuracy score so let's call here function train test split here we have to pass x comma y comma test size equal to 0.25 and here we will get the data in the uh, as s x train x train drain input test input train output and test output now you can see the number of samples in the train set. We have one, three, four, seven number of samples, 64 features. Okay. And uh, next, uh, we will initialize the model KNN equal to K neighbor classifier. If you see the detailed uh, documentation of this algorithm, you can see this hyper, these are the hyperparameters. But if you talk about important hyperparameters, which are n neighbors, okay, default value is five. And the metric means the distance formula, Minkowski here. Okay, so here, uh, if you want to change this uh, n neighbors, so let's say if you uh, let's take a three, and the default value is five. So let's uh, okay. So let's use uh, n neighbors equal to three, and uh, knn dot fit. We can pass here x train, comma y train. Okay, so after training a model, next. Uh, we want to uh, uh, next we want to make a prediction on some test sample so let's take a sample let's, uh, from x test okay and then we have to reshape it we have to reshape it into one comma minus one minus one means unknown columns and next we can check the shape the shape will be here one comma 64 you can see okay and next again uh, dot predict we want to get here a predicted label corresponding to the sample s1 so we are here we are getting uh, we are getting some warning also but uh, here you can see the class we are getting three okay the corresponding class we are getting here three okay next here we want to find the nearest neighbors right we want to get the nearest neighbors so how we can find the nearest neighbors because uh, the knn dot k neighbors we can use and uh, what arguments we can pass x neighbors at distance okay so uh, we want to get the neighbors nearest neighbors for the sample s1 and uh, we want a number of neighbors three and if you want to get the distance okay, the distance between the s1 sample and the neighbors right s1 and the each neighbors then we can use return distance equal to true so here we will get two things uh distance comma indexes so first 
uh, distance, you can see the distance between S1 and each neighbor. But instead of distance here, uh, we want to see the index. You can see these are the index numbers. Okay, now we want to display the actual labels corresponding to these index number, right? We want to get the actual labels corresponding to these index number so that uh, uh, we can find the predicted label on the basis of majority voting. So we can have a follow up here for K in for K in index, index zero. Okay, if we print K, so in the output, you can see we are getting the, okay, we are getting the index numbers. Next here, instead of this, we want to display corresponding label. So K comma this and uh, to the sample here, uh, we have pick here from X test, okay? Okay, so here we can pass Y train, right? The labels here, here we can only find from the Y train. So Y train can pass the K, you can see all all the three neighbors are belonging to category three or class three right so that's why here we are getting the predicted label also three right so on the basis of this result we can say this s1 sample belongs to class three right this s1 sample belongs to class three right so these line i have just showed you uh, how to get predicted label on the basis of nearest neighbors but we have only a inbuilt method that is predict right so we can use this method to get uh, to get the predicted output directly right but if you want to get the nearest neighbor then you can use this method k neighbors so the predicted label we are getting three right for the sample s1 and here you can also see the nearest neighbors here we are getting also three okay next here we want to get the accuracy score on the entire test data set so let's find here first we have to get the predicted labels on the test data set knn dot predict and here we can pass x test okay uh this morning uh, i think we are getting uh uh maybe I have a, some old version, right? Old version of scikit-learn, right? So if you're getting this warning, you can just update your scikit-learn version. Okay, next to uh, accuracy score. So we can pass here y test, comma, thread. So we are getting a 98% accuracy. Means 98% uh, samples are correctly classified by this model. So this is test accuracy, we can say test accuracy or test score. Similarly, we can find train accuracy. If you want to see the model performance in the train data, you can also get here train accuracy equal to accuracy and uh, actual output Y train and the predicted output we can find uh, with the help of this line can and dot predict and we can pass here extra right so now we will get a train accuracy which is 99 percent and the test accuracy we are getting 98 percent so on the basis of train and test accuracy we can see our models performing well on the train data as well as on the test data right our models performing well on the train data as well as on the test data if you want to get the misclassified samples in the case of test data, so we can use here uh, and now we can use a uh, numpy. So import numpy as np and np dot where we can pass y test not equal to print. You can see these are the index numbers of misclassified samples, right? So this is how we can implement KN. So KNN is a classification algorithm which is based on nearest neighbors and we have to pass this value. In the further classes, we will also see how to find the optimal value for this hyperparameter. Right? In the session of hyperparameter optimization.
Now let's talk about how to implement KNN using AWS SageMaker. So if you search here, uh, so here uh, you will find a separate algorithm in the SageMaker for the KNN. Uh, SageMaker KNN. The working behind the, uh, this algorithm will be same that uh, we have just covered. Okay? So KNN here we can use okay and sample notebook okay create a notebook instance okay here you can read the documentation about search maker KNN. so here you can see oh uh, we almost have same hyperparameters here okay so KNN. so KNN is a non-parametric right non-parametric means after uh KNN modeling, there will be no parameter like weight or coefficient, right? Intercept. So there is no such parameter that you will get after model training. Here you can see this K. So this K is equal to number of nearest neighbors, right? Number of nearest neighbors. And the predictor type, we have to mention classifier or regression. So this algorithm we can also use for regression next important okay and this index matrix here we have to pass the distance formula or the you can see this is optional right so this so hyperparameter we can use for the distance formula okay i'll show you uh, what uh, distance matrices we can use or distance formulas you can use in knn knn metric scalar so these are the distance formulas that we can use in KNN. The default one is this one, Minkowski. If we want to use Euclidean, we have to pass matrix equal to Euclidean. Okay, let's uh, implement KNN here. Let me open this. So first uh, we will implement KNN on IELTS data set and then I'll show you how to implement on uh, low digit data set. First we can import some necessary libraries here, some necessary functions or, or classes. So load iris, then train test split, import pandas, numpy, cborn. I think we can just display the data using matplotlib. So there is no need to import cborn. Then search maker, then boto3. Next is load iris as frame true and uh, iris data dot data. So here you will get input data of features and iris data dot target means you will get the target column or target values. Okay, I'll show you uh, what is the data type of iris data type. We can call type function. So here we are getting a type of class bunch. So if we write iris data here, you can see we are getting the data uh, in the form dictionary. Key value, key value. Okay, so we need uh, input data and output data. So input data we can store into this variable inputs and output data we can store into this variable target. We can also use a head. So inputs.head. So we have four features here and target column we can also store here. And after that, uh, we need a CSV where the first column we can set our target column. Okay, now you can see the target column here we are getting as the first column then features shape is final data or uh, final dot shape we will get the number of samples and columns next we will split the data into train and test next we can import knever classifier okay using cycle learn we have just covered so i'm not going to run all these lines okay let's see how we can implement knn using ch maker so after splitting the data next so here we can store the data into csv files so training data we can store into train data.csv and test data we can store into the test data.csv next uh, we have to upload these two csv files into the s3 bucket so let's create here s3 bucket s3 bucket this is your aws service for storage data create a bucket here okay so the bucket name here in the code we have taken iris cls demo so same bucket here we can create iris cls demo region will be same us east one and then click on the create bucket next so we will create subfolder first subfolder is my data you can also take some other name and another folder is saved model so bucket name is iris cls demo 
next we can call here method upload data you can pass csv file bucket name and kill prefix means subfolder name okay let's run this so this is the path s3 bucket name subfolder name and file name. similarly uh, we can upload our test data file into the same bucket so s3 bucket name then subfolder name and then file name and here you can see inside this my data where we have got these two files okay next here uh, we have to retrieve the knn image this image uri is dot retrieve knn region okay uh estimate okay here you can see the image name is knn right okay uh let's go back to it okay and we can also check any option you can see the implementation of knn hyperparameter uh this is small training okay so this is uh, uh this is another way to upload the data into bucket and then fetch the data and then implement knn okay so this is the image name right this is the model image name knn and here we, we can uh, here we have to also pass the reason name okay and then we can uh create a model location where we want to save our model and then we can initialize the knn model so container then role we can pass the number of instances then instance type the same ml dot m4 dot x large so this instance comes under the free tier plan okay then output path if you go beyond the free tier plan then uh, we have to pay some extra charge right so keep in mind that and output path output location then CH maker session equal to session object okay and then uh, we can mention the data so CH maker dot training input s3 data training input path content type so training data channel and similarly validation data channel so these two variables you can pass into the fit method okay so before uh, training a model uh, we can set the hyperparameters you can see set the values of hyperparameters so predicted type equal to classifier number of dimension of features equal to three and then number of neighbors three number of features four number of neighbors three and the sample size uh, here uh, we can pass that is length of the train data and then we can corporate matter and here if you want to see some documentation would can and sample size here you can see sample size required right k number of neighbors required and uh, predictor type also required here and this optional optional okay okay so the rest of the hyperparameters are optional but these are required sample size number of data points to be sample from the training data set and the predicted type and the number of neighbors right so these are the required hyperparameters that we have to pass instance type right instance count so meanwhile you can see uh, these are the distance formulas that we can use so this is the formula of equivalent distance formula this is the form of Manhattan, right? This is the form of Minkowski and so on. Okay, if you want to see other algorithms that we have in CHMaker, the CHMaker algorithms, built-in algorithms in CHMaker. Okay, uh, uh, let's, you know, let's see this one. Okay, so these are the, I think most, uh, these are the algorithms that we can use with CHMaker, right? Here you can see linear learner, KNN, XCBoost. If you talk about some important uh, algorithms, which are linear learner, XCBoost, KNN, and these are some important algorithms. And uh, we also have some inbuilt model here. We can see sequence to sequence, sentence pair classification using TensorFlow, sentence pair classification and phase question answer application using PyTorch. Okay. But uh, here you can see we have only few cycle run algorithm. We have K-means, PCA, right, for the unsupervised. But mostly we have 
algorithm from either from TensorFlow or Hugging Pace or PyTorch. Then we can deploy the model. So next we can create the endpoint name. So whatever endpoint name here uh, we set. So dead endpoint after deploy uh, after calling this method. So our endpoint will be saved here uh, in the section. Okay, here we can see in the section in French. And so after creating the endpoint, you can access the endpoint from this. Right? If you click on this endpoint, so you can see currently there is no resource, but after calling the deploy method, right here they will get the endpoint. Similarly, models here. After training a model, here we will also get a model. So downloading the input data, downloading the training image. So each Seismic algorithm we have as a image, Docker image you can say. Okay, so here we have implemented this. Okay, uh, what will happen if we pass number of neighbors equal to five? Let's check the result. Uh, basically, uh, we can just uh, okay. If, uh, let me just copy this. Just uh, predict line, copy this, and uh, paste it here. We want to see the model performance if we change the n neighbors. And uh, we want to also see the test accuracy. Okay, so what will be the test accuracy if we pass n neighbors equal to 5? So we are getting 9844. Okay, uh, if we pass 2. You can see uh, almost same. Okay, so if you want to see the changes in the accuracy, uh, I think you have to take some other data where we have a lot of samples, right? So you can work on amnest data set. You can work on amnest data set. So in this data set, we have same 110 digit images, 10 classes. And uh, but for number of samples we have 70,000, and this data we have 70,000 samples, and number of features 784. Okay, let's take here some other number seven. You can see now 9.98. Now we are getting okay, if we pass 10, so 0.97. Here you can see the last time it was 0 0.98, now we are getting 0 0.7. Right? So as you change this value, right, our accuracy will be impacted here. Right, so we have to find the right value. And that we can do with the help of hyperparameter tuning that we will discuss in the further lecture. We can also try some other distance formula. So metric equal to, let's use here. Okay, let's use our Euclidean distance formula. So we can pass here Euclidean, right, so five. 0.98. So, if you want to see some changes in in the accuracy, right, you have to use some other data set where the number where we have some large amount of samples, right? So you can use this analyst data set where you will find uh, 70,000 samples and 74 features. Okay. Uh, next, uh, just wait for a few minutes. Uh, okay. So here you can see the training has completed. Next, we can create model endpoint okay now it will take some time so meanwhile we can see some other things about knn so if you want to load amnest data so i'll show you how you can upload amnest data okay uh, we have to import from sklearn dot data sets import patch open ml let's try with this one patch open ml and uh, patch up in ML, we can pass data set name amnest 784. And uh, let's take a variable name amnest. It will take some time. Next, uh, okay, so amnest dot data dot shape. You can see 70,000 samples, 784 features. Okay, if you want to display a sample image, 
Uh, let's take here x equal to analyst.data and at index zero we have you can see and dot shape the shape is 74 but if you want to display uh, image we have to reshape the sample into 28 by 28 reshape this sample into 28 by 28 and then we can store it into let's say t1 and next to we can use plt dot let me show and we can pass t1 c map equal to gray and plt dot so uh check what error we are getting here i think so okay so we have this image so in this data we have images like this one right the size of each image is 28 by 28 that's why we are getting 74 features right so you can work on this data set using kn number of classes will be the same 10 so if you want to create an application like a, a decision recognition right you can use this amnes data set right if you want to build application like a digit recognition you can use this data set but instead of using knn you can use some advanced algorithm right if you want to get some high accuracy right or the better performance of the model then you can use some advanced algorithm so here all the images we have in the form of images right all the samples we have in the form of images so instead of using knn you can use cnn right conventional neural network you can use right if you want to get some better prediction right okay now it will take some more time then after the rest of the code will be the same right uh, we can set the serializer that will be equal to csv serializer then deserializer that will be equal to json d json deserializer then oh we can store all the test data into a variable let's take x test then uh then we can store uh, test output data into a variable let's take y test right and then after you can make prediction on the x test data right and you will get the output in the form dictionary right and then after you can use here numpy to convert the dictionary output into array right and then after you can find the accuracy score accuracy score is an evaluation metric uh, for the classification model and and then the next important step is we have to delete the model and to delete the endpoint also so you have two options either you can delete model and endpoint using these two lines or you can just directly go at this okay and you can also here you can see here we have got this canon and right, here you will find some information about the model right name ARN, creation time okay right? so if you want to delete this model here i think we you can see you have this option delete and uh, same here for the endpoint here you can see the status in service so if you click on this here you will get the detailed information about the endpoint okay next here let's set the serializer and deserializer and uh, this is our test data test input data and in the white test you have test output data then make prediction you can see here we are getting the output in the form of dictionary so predicted label and then label means class predicted label and then class so instead of the dictionary we want to get the output in the form of array right and then we can find the accuracy which is 0.94 and then most important step here is you want to delete uh, model and endpoint both now here you can check if you refresh this you can see now there is no resource similarly you can check for the models you can see there is no resource okay guys so uh, it is enough for today's session right in the next session we will talk about hyperparameter optimization right okay guys so let's uh, wind up this session and let's meet in the next class thank you